Relationships are special. Thank you for that. Thank you, Lord. So I was, uh, why don't you open your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6 real quick before we jump into the Word this morning. I guess we are jumping in the Word. Ephesians chapter 6. It says, Ephesians 6, 10, Finally be strong in the Lord in His mighty power. And it says, Put on the full armor of God. How many of you did that this morning? Well, I hopped on the scale and I realized that that armor sure is heavy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> ah! <laughs> How many of you know, like, if you jump on that scale, you're like, well, that armor sure is heavy. <laughs> Amen. Hey, we're going to uh, uh, continue in our I Am series uh, talking about who God is. How many of you know it's important that we know who He is? Um, and sometimes I don't think we realize how important it is that we know who God says he is. Life's experiences can tell us who God is. Somebody else could tell us who God is. Or let me say it this way, who he's not. Uh, but I believe it's so important for us to hear from the Lord about who he is. And... Um, I want to I want to turn here real quick this morning to Hebrews chapter eleven, Hebrews chapter eleven one uh, through two, and then we're going to go to verse six. We could really spend all morning in just on this topic itself, just knowing who God is. And this is why we've been talking in this series, I am, and who God is. It says, "Now faith is the substance of things hoped for; it's the evidence of things not seen." This is. Everything we're talking about today, so maybe you haven't seen God as what we've talked about over the last six weeks, but he is. And he'll be that to you if, if this right here, next verse. Uh, okay, so one through three, thanks so much. For by it the elders obtained a good report. So he's talking about, go back to verse one, I interrupted myself in my train of thought. So now faith is the substance of the things hoped for and the evidence of things not te- seen. It says by it the elders obtained a good report, verse three. It says, through faith, we understand. How many of you know that faith brings understanding to this? Through faith, through uh, the Word of God. The Bible tells us it, it is through the Word of God that faith comes. Faith comes by hearing, Romans 10, 17, and hearing by the Word of God. But faith, the understanding comes also through faith, not just hearing, Faith doesn't just come from hearing. Understand, understanding comes when we receive what we heard, faith. Faith produces understanding. It says, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things that do appear. In other words, what you and I see right now, it didn't come just from natural things. It didn't come from the tangible things. And so many times we're looking uh, to, to what we see for who God is instead of who, what he said, and what he said would produce what we see. It, that, that's, this, is how, this is how all of it works. And all of these heroes of faith, talking in Hebrews 11, you'll see that they looked at, they looked at God's word as greater than what they saw out here. And this is what we, we have to do. We have to see God's word as the, the greater, the greater than what you see it here and now. All right, let's go to the next, next verse. Verse 6, Hebrews eleven six. 6. It says this. It says, um, now, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. Or if that was the king, I guess that is the King James. I thought it was, I thought King James said, now without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because any man that comes to him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So to please God, it takes faith. God, God is honored and pleased and blessed by faith. But it says this, for he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. It is important for us to understand who he is. This is what he says. If you're gonna if, if you're gonna please God, we must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder. You know that word he is is the, is the same word as I am, the way, the truth, and the life. He is meaning I am. It's a verb. He is. And what we've been talking about, all of these names of God, the I am's of God, 
I am, Jehovah, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom. All of these are verbs. They're not just things. They're actually, they're verbs. It's, it's, it's a God who does something. I'm the one that heals thee. I'm the one who brings peace, Shalom. I'm the one who is a banner waving over you. That banner, we talked about that, how, how you're flying under, just like if our military flies under that flag. All provisions, all resources, the, it's active. God's active. And here's what he's saying. You must believe that he is. And that word right there, it's a verb. If you look it up, it's the same word that says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am. We were talking about this whole series. I am. I am what? Who is God? Who has he said he is? He is the healer. He is the provider. He is the shepherd. He is what we're talking we talk about next week. He is our righteousness. He is what? This week, Shema. He is the Lord who is there. And it's so important for us to understand that, that, that when we say that he, when we come to God that he is, and he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. It's so cool that he is and he is. So both of those things are he is active and he's active. So he is, this is what he is and he's actively doing, but he's also actively bringing. Uh, he's not dead. He's not, he's not a, a non-existing past tense he did you know, back in the day God. Everything didn't die with the disciples. He's still the healer. He's still the provider. He's still the prince of peace for you and me. But you know what it takes? It takes the preaching of the word. The preaching of the word for this, the, the word of God is what, when it's sent forth, it produces faith. I, I love Paul. When I don't have the, the verse I was reading there th this week. And it says, Paul's uh, imprisonment or Paul's uh, uh, not struggle, but uh, his um, persecution for the church. He said he took on this and he took on this so that the word of God could be preached to the church, so that the mystery of Christ in you, the hope of glory, would be preached. This is Colossians. Colossians, I think, 3.16 is actually where it's at. He said, I, I, all of that, I, that I've, I've suffered, all that I'm still suffering, is that I could preach the word of God to the Gentiles, that you would know Christ in you, the hope of glory. He was saying this, that, that it doesn't matter what I have to go through. I'm going to follow the commission or, or the call that God found me and commissioned me to bring this message of Christ in you, the hope of glory. The, the hope of all goodness, the hope of what we're seeing is that the word of God was brought to the Gentiles, that God is with you and that he's for you and that Emmanuel, God with us, Matthew 1, 2, 3. I love that verse, Matthew 1, 2, 3. It's that simple. Matthew 1, 23. When you're facing something, you get back to the basics. 1, 2, 3. Emmanuel, God with us. God with us. And he said that I, that was why I'm in chains. That's why I'm, I'm at, is to preach the word of God to you, that he came, that he came when, he, when, we, when there was no hope. He came not just for the Jewish, Jewish people, but, be, but to the Gentiles as well. And so here we go. Uh, this is why we've been going over these verses um, and, and, and this message. So we, um, again, today we're talking about Shammah, but I want you just to see again that slide, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. Now these are in order uh, as far as in the New Testament, or not the New Testament, but how they appear in the Old Testament. So if you have that whole big slide, he's rocking it. So we got Jehovah Jireh, and these, you'll see that this is where each, each one is, is first mentioned. And so we talked about that. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. Jehovah Nisi, the banner of our victory. I love that, the banner of our victory. Uh, Jehovah Shalom, our peace. Jehovah Ra, how many of you got that text this, more, uh, this week that said, uh, we're going to come talk about Jehovah Ra, the Lord who is there? Well, we just wanted to see if you knew that the shepherd was going to be there. All right. Anyway, Jehovah Ra, which is the Lord my shepherd, sick canoe, and then Jehovah Shama, which is righteous, um, sick canoe righteousness, and Shama, which is the Lord is there. And so next week, we're going to end on, uh, on the Lord is our righteousness, but today, we're going to talk about the Lord is there. The Lord is there. Have you ever just kind of wondered, is he there? You ever been in a situation where you're just like, is he there? Like, where you at? Where you at? Let's, let's look at this, this verse here. And it's found in Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 35. The Lord is there. And we're going to give a little backlog to this after we read this verse. It says, the perimeter of the city, this is talking about heaven. He's talking about what heaven will be like. 
and, and, and not just heaven, excuse me, the city of Jerusalem, this city where the, all of Ezekiel's talking is a prophecy, uh, really talking about the, the children of Israel uh, and the God's presence leaving, leaving them, leaving the city, Ezekiel chapter 10, leaving. And then here in, at the very end of Ezekiel, he's talking about how God's going to restore Jerusalem, how it's going to become the city of God, what it's going to be like, what it's going to look like, all that's going to happen in that place when God's presence is restored. And it says this, again, put that verse back up there, please. And, uh, and you can just leave that, leave verses more than the Shama uh, to this morning, if you don't mind, just that way, jumping back and forth, that would be awesome. So the perimeter of the city will be 1,800 cubits, and from that day on, the name of the city will be the Lord is there. So Jerusalem gets a name change. Well, uh, Ezekiel 48, verse 35, um, praise the Lord. Let's see here. Let me, let, me, let me just close this, and then I'll just use this. We'll read from here. All right. Ezekiel 48, 35, the perimeter of the city is, will be 18,000 18, cubits, and from that day on, the name of the city will be the Lord is there. This is significant because that's, that's like the high point. The high point of, it, of that city is that, Jesus, that God is there. It doesn't say, oh, that city's going to have streets of gold and gates and and all of this stuff, it's just God's there. Like, this is maybe why we come to church. Hopefully this is why we go to church, is because not because they have cool lights or, or because the worship music or because of the children's ministry or because my friends go there, but hopefully you come to church because you've met God here before. Hopefully you come to church and you're sitting here, and young people, you're here today because I've encountered God there, and this is why I show up, because I want to meet God there again. And so the, the whole, the climax of everything is that God's there. God's in this place. God's in this city. I, 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 he, his presence had been removed, but, but he's coming back, and I'm going to name the city God is there. That's amazing that God is there. Do you know that we see in Matthew, I mentioned this, Matthew 123, uh, when, when Jesus came, and they should call his name Emmanuel, God is with us. It does Not God might be with us, not he'll be there one day, but he'll always be there. He'll never leave you, he'll never forsake you. God is with us. He, so you see that this is that last uh, testament of the city, but also the, how God starts out when he sent Jesus. God with us, God there. And I want you to see this. Uh, what I want, want to talk about this morning, I could go a hundred different places to where God is there, God is there, God is there. And I, I was thinking about that as I was writing some stuff in my notes earlier this week and really uh, even a couple weeks ago, God is there. And if you write the word there, there's a T. And I, I didn't capitalize T, I, I did the cross T. And I just thought about because of the cross, he's here. So he's not just there, he's here. He's here. Why? Because of the cross. And so I just, I kind of was doing a little do, bit of doodling and, and did, drew the T uh, there, and then I kind of separated the two because of the cross. He's here. Because of the cross and his blood paying the price for my sins, he could be here. And this is what it, what, why he sent Jesus, because he wanted to be here. He wanted to be in my situation. He wanted to be in your situation. He wanted to be in and in, in walk with me in, in, in the garden of my life. When sometimes it seems like there's thorns. When sometimes it seems like there's heavies and all these kind of things. I want you to see uh, the, 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 not just the name of this city, but as we look at what when God's presence is in this city, we're going to back up just a chapter here. To Ezekiel 47, and we're going to read about uh, Ezekiel 47, 1 through 12. We're going to read about what's going on in the temple of God in this city, okay? And, and, and we're, going to, we're going to see how this translates to you and me in this life, okay? It says this in, in Ezekiel 47, verse 1. It says, uh, and this is about the water for where, from where God is, Okay? How many of you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? If you've been made born again, if you've been made new, if, you, if Jesus is your Lord, the Bible says that his spirit comes and, and, and resides in us, and his spirit bears, bears witness with my spirit that we're a child of God. Okay, So it's important that we know that. 
just as we make this connection here. It says, Then the man brought me back to the entrance of the temple, and I saw water flowing, this is verse 1, from under the threshold of the temple toward the east, for the temple faces east. So out of the front of the temple, there's, there's, there's this, they're looking out, and out of the front of this temple, water begins to flow. The water was coming down from under the south side of the temple, south of the altar. Next, he brought me out through the north gate and led me around the side to see, or to the outer gate facing east. And there I saw the water trickling out from the south side. As the man went eastward with a measuring line in his hand, he measured off a thousand cubits and led me through ankle deep water. So here's the, what's going on is there's the temple of God and there's water flowing from the temple. And so he talks about all these directions coming out of the south side, and now it's, there's this river flowing out, and it's flowing out toward what we know today as the Dead Sea. But it's flowing from the temple, and what's flowing, what, it, what it's going to do, it's going to bring life to a place that's dead. Look at this. So it says, and as it went eastward with a measuring line in his hand, he measured off a thousand cubits, and he led me through to ankle deep water. So there's just a little water, a little river. I got a river of life flowing out of me. Right? It's like maybe, maybe sometimes we sing it just this little river. You know, you can walk across it like the Mississippi. If you go to Itasca State Park in Minnesota, you can, there's actually stones that you can just walk across the Mississippi at the very beginning. But as, as he measured off another 1,000, uh, verse 4, 1,000 cubits, it led me through knee-deep water. I love it. It, it. it got deeper. And again, 1,000 cubits, and then it was waist-deep water. Somebody pray for my enunciation this morning. I'm struggling. I don't know what the deal is. Um, once again, he measured off another 1,000 cubits, but now the river was so that I could not cross because the water had risen and was deep enough for swimming, a river that could not be crossed on foot. And he said, verse 6, Son of man, do you see this, he asked. Then he led me back to the bank of the river. Uh, so he's talking about this river flowing out of the city of God, out of the temple of God. You are the temple. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Okay? Okay, we're, we're making that correlation. And then here, look at what's going on. This is so cool. If you like to, uh, if you love fall, harvest time, right? You might be seeing pears on trees or apples or pumpkins or you just whatever it might be, but this is typically harvest time, right? Uh, and it says this, when I arrived, I saw a great number of trees along the riverbank. So on this river, there's trees. And he said to me, the water that flows uh, out to the eastern region and goes down to Araba, when it, it empties into the sea, the water there becomes fresh. Wherever the river flows, there will be swarms of living creatures and a great number of fish because it flows there and makes the waters fresh. So I love this. It's not just waters flowing. The waters aren't the only thing that's fresh. The water that's flowing from the throne of God or from the, the, the city of God out of the temple, it, it, it's fresh water, but it also has so much life in it that it causes even dead, dead spaces to be bursting full of life. So this is so cool because what, what's in you, out of your bellies, the Bible tells us that we shall flow rivers of living water. We're going to look at that verse here in a moment. But so much life is to flow from and is in the river that it brings life to dead places. The Lord is there. Where the Lord is, he brings life to dead places. So if I have dead places in my life and I understand who God is, Hebrews eleven six. Now, without faith, it's impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must know that he is. See, I won't come to God for about a dead space in my life and believe him to bring life and bring uh, uh, into that place if I don't know him as the Lord who's there. The Lord who's there and where, where he is, a river flows from his place and brings life. And so it says that it brought life a great number of fish because it flows there and makes the waters fresh. So wherever the river flows, everything will flourish. Somebody say that. Wherever the river flows. Wherever it flows, everything will flourish. Oh, glory to God. So let me ask you this. Is, where is the river flowing in my life? Where is the river flowing in your life? Because I'll tell you, sometimes the river doesn't flow. 
Because out of your belly, it does, we don't just go, ooh. It's got to come out of here, up and out of our mouth. And this is how we fight the fight of faith. We don't just hear. So faith comes when we hear, but faith is released when we speak. This is this whole, this whole last week, you were black dot, black dot, black dot, white space, white space, noticing them, and you can go in your own power to try to go not be negative, or you could replace it with the promise of God, and now you could war and recognize that what is going on with these cares is actually to steal your attention from where it really should be. And so what do you do? You, you fight the fight of faith by putting the word of God in your mouth. But it won't come out of your mouth if it doesn't first Is it not first found here? Or if it's not dammed up with all kinds of cares. Okay? Now, let's let's finish this finish reading here. It says verse um, verse 10. Fishermen will stand by the shore from Engedi uh, and and Galem and Galem, and they will spread their nets to catch fish of many kinds, like the fish of the great sea, or that of Galilee. Okay? Um, the swamps uh, and the marshes, they will not become fresh. They will be left for salt. I love this, this last verse, uh, verse 12. Although both banks of the river, along, excuse me, along both banks of the river, fruit trees of all kinds will grow. And I love fruit trees, okay? Love fruit trees. Their leaves will not wither and their fruit will not fail. This is what's so cool. Each month they will bear fruit because the water from the sanctuary flows to them their fruit will be used for food and their leaves for healing. Each month, they will bear fruit. That, that's, that's crazy, awesome. Like, as fast as you pick an apple, you'll pick the apple, and even if you were to pick the fruit spur off, how many of you ever pick an apple or pick something off the tree and that little piece of wood comes with it and the leaves, and it looks pretty, but you actually damaged the tree, you know? But even if you did that, it's like, There would just be this new life flowing in a bloom. And like almost when you picked it and you thought, well, I'm just going to eat this because it's for food and the leaves for healing. Along there's, there's trees planted. There's fruit growing, all kinds of fruit. And you grab one. And while, you get, while you're eating that one and you're like about to throw the core away and you're looking, you see that it not only has bloomed, but there's already another piece of fruit there and it's growing. Yeah. And you go there and there's all different stages of fruit. There's always flowers on the tree. Like, how many of you love spring, but you love fall? What's your favorite season? You don't have to pick. You just pick the fruit. There's fruit available along and where the river of God flows. And so if there's not fruit in our lives, it might just be that some other river is flowing. The Bible talks about out of, in our, the, 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 there should not be out of the well of the heart bitter and sweet water flowing. Like it, but it's possible that what's coming out of us is, is, is bitterness when what's supposed to be coming out of us is life. So how do, we, how do we make this, how do we recognize as God, as him who's there, and, and call upon him uh, because this is who he is? Just, just because God is something doesn't mean I'm going to access him as that in my life. God is the creator. He's the provider. But just because he is that doesn't mean that he's going to be that to me. Because the way that he is any of these things to me is I have to call him that. This is why, this is why he gave us his names. This is why he gave us, and we would know him as our father God who is our healer, our our provider, our peace, our, all of these things. He has a name. Like, one of the, to me, one of the most dis- disrespectful things you can do to your father is call him by his first name. That's just me. Because you just remove the honor. You just remove the, the headship. You just remove the flow down. And, and there's something about that name that was given to him because, because he bore you. Or you're, you're, I know the women, but because he was part of producing you. So it is father. It is my dad. But, and, and in that name, in that name is all those things of provider, of, of, of helper, of all, all of those things. 
So it's important that we know who he is in his name. Let's, let's go here so we have context. John chapter 7, 38 through 39. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. So he's talking about if you're thirsty, if you're tired, if you're weary, let it come to drink. And whoever believes in me, as the scripture said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. As yet, the Spirit had not been given because Jesus had not been glorified. So I want to make sure that this is clear. I didn't just read that, that first verse, but the second. The Spirit of God is what he's talking about as being rivers of water. The Spirit of God flowing out of you, you and me. In the same way that, that, that out of that throne, or excuse me, out of that city uh, in the temple, there was a river that flowed out and brought life, there's to be a river flowing out of you and me bringing life. 2 Corinthians, you know, and, and when, it, when, when it's coming out and bringing life, it's fresh water. It's not salty. It's fresh water. So let's just talking about you and me. God wants you and me to be fresh. Like fresh. Have you ever been there where you're just tired? You're just burned out? You're just wore out? You're not fresh. And so because you can't, because you're not fresh, you know what you can't do? You can't refresh. So if, if, the, if, if you and I are Jesus to the world, that's actually what we are. We're, the Bible tells us that we are, uh, we'll look at this here in a moment, but we are the ones that are to administer the new covenant. We're the ones to administer, uh, administer, well, let's look here real quick. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Second Corinthians chapter three. I didn't give you this verse. Second Corinthians chapter three, uh, verse five, or verse. Um, let's go to verse six. Second Corinthians three six, and He has qualified us. Talking about God has qualified us as ministers or servants of a new covenant, not of the letter. But of the Spirit, for the letter kills, but the Spirit, what does it do? Gives life. So, so what's to flow out of you, the, the ministry of a new covenant, a new agreement that God made with man through Jesus Christ, is to bring life wherever it goes. Just like this other river, that out of your and my belt, we're, we, are, we have been qualified or chosen to be ministers and to carry about a new covenant or to carry about the letter of the Spirit of God, the letter or the word of the Spirit of God, the letter of the Spirit. What is that? It could be sometimes it's not like the letter A, B, C, or D. It's the letter as the word, like I wrote you a letter. Like, like God wrote you a letter. The Spirit of God wrote you a letter. So wherever you go, there's a letter like you would write your girlfriend a note, okay, or a text, but there's a letter that is, is for people that's to flow from here and, and speak from here to their spirit. Have you ever got a, had someone get like, hey, hey I just uh, wanted to uh, talk, talk with you for, uh, hey, God, okay, here's all I can, have you ever, let's just do this, okay? Let's do this. this I'm, I'm trying, I kind of, was trying to back up here and say, have you ever received a word from God? Have you ever just had something in your heart um, or, or you're just kind of going about your day and somebody says, hey, can I pray for you? And they just, I just felt like the Lord wanted to, it might have been in a service, it might have been in McDonald's, it could have been anywhere. And what they spoke wasn't to hear, but it was to hear. And what it did is it caused like life to flow there. And it was a letter, you know? And, and so... Uh, and, and, and it says this again, it says, and he has qualified us or chosen us as ministers of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit for the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. It's not of the letter of the law, like keep everything what, uh, perfect of the law, but there's a letter of the spirit. Okay. I know there's a letter of the spirit there. There's the, there's a, there's a writing of God, just like there was a writing of God in the law. There's a writing of God of the Spirit, and this is how you and I preach the gospel. Like, sometimes we wonder, how do you preach the gospel? You ever wonder, how do you preach the good news? 
You, you preach the good news with the Spirit of God upon you. Luke chapter 4 says, the Spirit, Jesus says, The Spirit of God is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the good news. I can't just preach the good news by opening Romans 10, 9, and 10 and telling you, um, well, guess what? It says that with your heart man believes and with your mouth confession is made unto salvation. I mean, I can lead you through the Romans road, okay? Let's, let's go ahead and read, read, that, read this here. The, how many of you know the Holy Spirit shows up? We're just going off something totally different here this morning. Um, you know, it's really good to know your Bible, Okay, it's really good because it, the word, it's light to me, it's life to me. But Romans chapter uh, 10, verse 9, it says this. It says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is the Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. For it is with your heart you believe and are justified, and with your mouth confession is you know, made unto salvation. So I can bring that to you, but if, if, if that's not the word, if, if that's, that's written here, okay, and it is life. But sometimes there's a different word that somebody needs that's going to administer salvation. And that word might be concerning what's going on in their life. And it, uh, it's, it's, the, it's the key. It's the key to unlock the heart. It's the key to unlock the heart so the good news can flow. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel, to set the captive free, to preach recovery of sight to the blind, to, to talk about this is the year of the Lord's favor upon your life. And it's his goodness, the Bible tells us, that leads us to turn towards him. Somebody making the decision, I don't just pull out just a scripture and that's just one size fits all for everyone. There is rhema words or God's spoken words where his breath is on it because you took time to hear from God. See, gifts take thoughtfulness. Gifts take thoughtfulness. Anybody bought a gift for somebody lately? Like, Juan and Michelle, is it okay if I talk about your gift for a sec? Yeah, yeah, because, you know, you haven't even opened it yet. <laughs> Let's talk about Christmas gifts instead. <laughs> Christmas gifts. They're just thoughts that go into Christmas. I'm going to go back to my son, Samuel, who was little, and we used to watch uh, Goss, not Gospel Bill, but we used to watch Bonanza all the time. And we would run around, dun, 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 around the living room. Like, we'd gallop around. And he always wore cowboy boots, no matter if he had shorts or whatever. And he had a cowboy hat, and he had a little cap gun. And he said, I'm Little Joe. And he'd roll across the floor and bang, bang. Okay? He was into it. And they drank whiskey, but we said, we drink sweet tea. So we tried to, we drink, what you know, it's sweet tea. We drink sweet tea. Yeah, give me some of that sweet tea. Okay, so super fun, and so I thought, God, oh, you know what would be so cool? Christmas morning, he loves Little Joe, and he loved Little Joe's horse. I'm going to get him a horse. So there was a lot of forethought that went into getting this pony horse thing, this animal that was not, not that broke. And all that I had to do to get it there, where it was going to be, who was going to deliver it. I had help from friends to get this, ho- this horse there and then have it tied up outside of the window Christmas morning to where when he came and he opened up his, his pair, or my mother and father-in-law, uh, Kevin and Susan Fletcher, they um, got him leather chaps, you know, to where he got all this. He looked just like little Joe. I mean, he had the full get up and it's like, oh, the only thing you're missing is what? Because you got to lead up to the whole deal. Right? Well, the only thing you're missing, what, what, is, what is he missing? A horse. a horse. Yeah, I need a horse. Well, come on. Let's just, and there's the horse. Oh, my gosh, the horse. I was excited, so excited that I put him on it. He had no bit in his mouth. He had a halter. And uh, this horse decided, he was saddled, though. Um, he decided I was going to lead him around. Uh, with that, and I thought it would be fine, but then Samuel said, oh, no, I got it, Dad. I got it. I'm like, no, 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 buddy. He's like, no, I got it, Dad. I can do it all by myself, and I, so I put that, the, the reins over the top, but he didn't have a bit in his mouth, just a halter, and uh, he's, he's kind of walking, and I'm like, okay, hey, buddy, pull back on that a little bit. Pull back, Dad, Dad, and he's not pulling back. He's not pulling back, and that horse took off like a just, you know. Anyway, that was terrible, and he never rode a horse again, and I had this horse, and this horse ran my cows through fences, and anyway, anyway, 
I'm saying this story because gifts take thoughtfulness. Gifts take thoughtfulness. And if I'm so consumed with only myself, and if I'm so consumed about all that I don't have, and if I'm so consumed about how this didn't work out, if I'm so consumed about the, the somebody says, oh, um, hey, can I meet with you? As a pastor, just telling you, can I meet with you with no details? That could mean a lot of things. And, and so now, going through that, okay, what, what are they meeting about? Hey, uh, you know, and it could be, hey, we wanted to give you a check. Haven't, you know, that'd be cool. Like, we speak those things, right? Um, they could say, uh, hey, we're moving to Minnesota, right? They could say, and that's a good thing, right? They could say, um, uh, we're leaving the church. They could say, but, all, but when somebody says to you, hey, can I meet with you? And that's all it is. It can cause you to be self-consumed. Self, what? Because I'm self-concerned. I'm self-concerned. Being, like you said, being self-absorbed is simply because, because I'm concerned of how that's going to affect me. When the gas prices go up, I will struggle to bring a gift to somebody else because I'll be thinking... Because I don't know God who he is. Anyone who comes to God must know who he is. So that faith, because this is faith. Faith, for faith to flow, it's me, it starts with me first knowing who God is. So that no matter what's going on in my life, the flow of God, the river of God is not interrupted. The river of God, that's, I got all kinds of rivers here. All kinds that are, you're in college, you're in school, you're on the, on the cattle floor, you're, you're, you're all kinds of rivers here. But when, when I get a report from a doctor about high blood pressure, and now my, guess what? The thoughtfulness to bring the gifts of the Spirit, okay? Not the gifts of Nate, not the gifts of Chad, not the gifts of Kyle, the gifts of the Spirit, okay? The, which take thoughtfulness, and thoughtfulness is the key to allowing the river to flow. But when, my, when I'm so self-consumed with all the other cares of this world, because I don't know God as Jehovah, Jireh, who, the Lord who provides. So for every person here, there's a different attribute, attribute, attribute and name of God that he gave so that you and I would, uh, would not be hindered, but instead recognize that the Lord is there. And because the Lord is there, I do not fear what man can do unto me. Because the Lord is there, I'm not concerned about this. Because the Lord is there. I, and, and who is there? The Lord. The Lord who? The Lord, Jehovah. The Lord who heals. The Lord who is my victory. The Lord who is a banner that's flying over me. Every resource that I need. He's there. He's there. The Lord is there. So guess what? That means I can be here for the reason which I was sent. Can you, you know what Jesus, he went to the Garden of Gethsemane? You know what he was? He was here, but he wasn't, he wasn't there where he, where he was fighting. He was fighting these mental torment, spiritual torment, anguish of what he was going to have to do to lay himself down. His thoughts were not about other people at the mo- and, and until he laid his life down. Lord, you be glorified. As long as the thoughts were upon himself, it was to the point that he sweat blood. But when he got over of laying his, not, not myself, this is how the enemy loves to work with us. Talk about you. Let's talk about what you don't have. Let's talk about what you can't do. Let's talk about the report. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about how you didn't. Let's talk about how they did. Let's talk about... Oh, I mean, I just love the Lord as your, my banner because he's singing over me. Like sometimes people don't sing over you. Paul didn't have everyone singing over me. Some people are going to talk about you, coach. You're, you, I mean, <laughs> five years and you're going to just throw it in like that because... And just, and I'm the reason. Uh, can that? Can, how does that feel? Well, guess what? You might got get the W, but you got a W. And as long as I, that mindset doesn't go into the L, I don't. I'm not gonna. That's not what my future holds. 
I mean, it matters. Just like Chip was talking about last week, the Tim Tebow talk. I can promise you this. I can promise you this. I will work hard. I can promise you this. This is what he gave that talk about how, let me tell you, I'm not going to get my, and just lead. Because the next word that came out of his mouth determined his tomorrow. And here's what's so cool. The Lord is there means he's not just here. It means he's there. He's in my future wherever I go. He's there. He's there. I love that scripture, Jeremiah 29, 11. I know sometimes you know, people want to talk about, oh, only context. But let's talk about character, not context. Sometimes, or in other words, where, who he's talking to, when he's talking to. Let's remember, remember who you're talking to. I love that song. The only one that death bows to. Let's remember who's talking here. And he talks about, I know the thoughts and plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Thoughts of a hope and a future. Why? Because he's there. He's already there. He's been, he's, he's been there. So where, you, where you're going and where your steps are ordered to the Lord, he's there. He's there. And he wants to flow there. What wants to flow there? The cross wants to flow here. Right, right where I'm at, I'm to bring, right where they're captive, there's a word of the Lord for somebody. There's a letter of the Spirit of God that brings liberty and life because of Christ Jesus. The Lord is here. The Lord is there. The Lord is here because, he, because of Jesus. And do I know him as that? Or, or, or it's so important but to, to know that, but how do I get out of that? How do I, how do I get, uh, let's look at just some, some cares. Let's look at what do we do with care? What are you going to do with it? What do you do with care when you have anxious thoughts? You, you, you cast your care? You, you pray? With prayer and thanksgiving, let your re- thanksgiving for what? For who he is? I mean, we were just talking about that this morning with, uh, with Landon about so many times, or, you know, this morning he was talking to you, but we were talking this morning about how, you know, you got five, you got two, you got one, and you don't have five, I have one. And so because you don't rejoice over what you have, you just, you just don't steward it. And it's amazing how not having the five can cause you to, when you only have the one, can cause you to so become embittered at the one that has the five. So then it it moves into this thing that's not even, it's not even no longer just about you. Well, let me say this, because it's never been just about you. You you and I got to understand that I was found for it with a purpose and for a purpose. And so to keep me distracted and to keep me full of anxious thoughts. Let's hear. Let's let's go here. Let's go to Philippians chapter 4, 6. Let's go way down here. I don't know if I even gave you that verse. Hallelujah. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So it matters that your hearts are guarded, but it also matters that your mind's guarded. Let's, let's talk about that for a second. You can have a guarded heart, and your mind can just be wide open. Can that be possible? That you know enough to guard your heart, but not to take thoughts captive and bring them to the obedience of Christ? And so it's kind of like this. And depending on how hard it pulls, well, first of all, you go nowhere. So you're in a stuck place. Because you know enough in your heart to know what's right. To know what you to do. To guard, to put, I hide his word in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Right? Psalm, hide, uh, the, thy word is a light unto my path. So I know light, and I know what's right. And I've, I'm guarding my heart, but, but my mind is being pulled this way and being pulled this way. And I love the analogy of being pulled because you are a three-part being. You are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. And what's crazy is this body will take on the effects of when you're pulled this way spiritually and pulled this way in your soul. You, this body, this flesh, you'll see rashes, you'll see ir- irregular heartbeats, you'll see high blood pressure, you'll see... All kinds of things. This body, this body will have fear. 
This body will have anger. This body will have... And so you're pulled apart. So it talks about when you have thoughts, when you have thoughts, it's important that what you do and I do with those thoughts. What do we do? We bring those thoughts to the Lord. And we, we, we don't just say, well, you've got to acknowledge the thought. This is what's so cool when you pray. When you talk to the Lord about that thought, you acknowledge that thought. And you know what he'll do when you're talking to him about that? He'll say, yeah, and what do I say about that? That's what he'll do. And he'll say, yeah, but what do I say about that? If you'll pray about that thought, he'll bring you his word, and then you can say, you can repeat back to him that word. He'll give you the word in season, the one that you need for that time, and it will take, and you'll say, I take that thought captive to the obedience of Christ. I'm going to make that thought agree with Christ. What Christ says. Let's go here real quick. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4.13 it tells us this, we believe, therefore we speak. I believe, therefore I have spoken. Listen to it out of the BSB real quick. This is the Brian Study Bible. Paul says this, I'm going to stay with what is written. I'm going to, 2 Corinthians 4, 13. We're not going to go super long this morning. We're going to go right, okay? Um, so 2 Corinthians 4, 13, it says this. Uh, yeah, 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 that's right. It says, and, verse 13, and, and in keeping with what is written. I love how that says that. He's talking about in keeping with what is written. He's going to quote from the book of Psalms, okay? But I just love how that said, in keeping with what is written. You know there's a lot of things that change in life, like every day. Like all it takes is you to get a phone call about, oh, this isn't going to work. And all of a sudden it's like, ah. Oh. But let's keep with what is written. Let's keep with what doesn't change. Let's keep with what remains the same day and day. Let's keep with this. But if you go to Psalms 116, which is where he's talking about here, he's talking about in keeping what was written, I believe, therefore I have spoken. He's talking, he's quoting from Psalms where David said, I was pressed on every side, and, but I spoke. Let's, 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 just, uh, let's just take some time to go there, and we're going we're gonna to more or less close with, with this, uh, this passage this morning. And then Acts chapter uh, 3. So Psalms 116. It's so funny. I was talking with Landon this morning uh, up in my office. I was like, I can't. I'm struggling to figure out where to go because I feel like we're supposed to go somewhere. But I really need to stick with, like, trying to wrap this shama up, you know. Like, uh, not, <laughs> that's, that didn't sound great. <laughs> oh, I, I wanted to teach on the Lord is there. But I wanted to, like, I also knew that we had to say some stuff. That's, you know, and, and acknowledge him as who he is. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those. I love the, even the idea that he's a rewarder, that he's active, re, actively rewarding. Like, he's, he's not done being a rewarder. He, he wasn't a re, one that rewarded he is a rewarder, which means he's rewarding. What is he rewarding? It starts with an F, and it's a five-letter word. Faith. He's rewarding faith. What is faith? Agreeing with God and who he says he is. It's easy to agree with who God says he is when you're not fighting that battle. But when you're fighting the battle of finances, sometimes it's a little harder to agree with him as Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides. When you're fighting the battle of health in your body or your loved one, sometimes it's a little harder to, to acknowledge and agree with who he says he is in that battle. I don't know what battle you're fighting today, but there's, there's a way to fight, and it's not just by a mental ascent. It's the fight of faith. And it's opening our mouth and speaking the word of God as, as with authority. Why? What is, because he said it. So I'm just repeating what he said. I'm repeating it right back, not just to me, but to my enemy. To your enemy, to depression. The joy of the Lord is my strength. You feel zapped? No, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I can say it, the joy, because this is authority. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I, I, 
I can be pressed on every side, but I'm not crushed because greater is he that's in me. So that which is pushing back is greater. I, I see it like Samson, you know, my, and, and maybe he had, he had fallen, but the Lord gave it back to him. And he, what was immovable, he, he pushed it down. Thank you, Lord. Psalms 116. And so he said, I believe, therefore I have spoken. Again, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 13, and Psalms is the, is the you know, parallel passage. Thank you, Lord. There it is. And that's, it's in verse 10 that he talks about that. He says, I believe, therefore I said. He, he believed he was, great, he was greatly afflicted. He was in a time of great anguish and torment. Okay? And so he, but he believed something. This is why he prayed. So let's go back up to the verse 1 of Psalms 116. This is what he prayed. And I love this. Um, different, different translations uh, have a different heading above. Um, I, don't you like sometimes the titles? You know, if you have your own, if you have a Bible that's not just a, a tablet, a lot of times there'll be little headings above, uh, uh, right below what they're talking about. And you'll see even in chapters, it'll break it down and talk to you about little different portions. But this is, it says this, the Lord has heard my voice. You know why? Because he's there. Look, this is, this is that he's there. He, or let me say it this way, he's here, cross, here. So the Lord has heard my voice. This is that heading there. And it says, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. And so, let me just tell you this. Um, the Bible tells us it's the goodness of God that led us to repentance. We love him because he loved us. Sometimes I think we feel bad loving God because, because he loved me. You ever felt that way? Anybody raise your hand? We can. You ever felt bad like saying, well, I'm only loving God because he did something good for me. Yep, the Bible told me that. So for you to love, think you love God because you're just good, that's just pride. The only reason I love God is because he loved me first. It was his goodness, it was his kindness, it was that, that, that drew me to him. And so here's David talking about his love for God because he heard me. I, I, and love listens. Husbands, love listens. That's what that's what it looks like. That just it's okay to listen. I love the Lord for He has heard my voice, my appeal for His mercy. The word mercy there is not the word hasid; it's the word for supplication or prayer. It's not, his seed means covenant loyalty. Mercy is translated oftentimes covenant loyalty. But this one, he's heard, he says, uh, he, he, my appeal for mercy, that word is really supplications, that oh, I called upon him and he answered. What we just read in, in Philippians, be anxious for nothing, but with everything, let your wants and your requests be made known to God. And here he's talking, he said, God heard me. I love you, God, you because you loved me, you heard me. Your ear was inclined to me. You know, God doesn't just tell you to incline your ear to his sayings. Did you know that he's inclined to your sayings? Do we know that? That he's inclined to my sayings? When my heart's hurt and I cry out to him, did you know he'll heal that? But it takes me crying out to him? Not just to others. It's so vital that I'm not full of care and blocking the river that's to be flowing out of me. I love the Lord for he's heard me, my appeal for mercy, because he's, he's inclined his ear to me. I will call on him as long as I live. The ropes of death, they entangled me. The anguish of hell or Sheol overcame me. I was confronted by trouble and sorrow, but then I called on the name of the Lord. And I love this. He delivered my soul. 
you can be, need the deliverance in your body. You can, when, when I called upon the name of the Lord to be saved, my spirit is what got saved. My, he saved my spirit. But here he's talking about how he, what did he do? He, he healed his soul. He delivered my soul. You know, your soul can be one of the thing, the hardest things. You can't deliver your soul by yourself. We can, you can go to counselors after counselor after counselor, and they, they'll try to tell you to unpack and repack. But it's kind of like a root canal, you know, where you pull out all, try to get all, and pack it with something else. Where God is the one that heals. God can heal your soul. He can deliver your soul. Thank you, Lord. I just I believe that, you know, as we read the word of God this morning, what he did for David, he's doing for you. Because he's doing for me. I called upon the name of the Lord. He delivered my soul. The Lord is gracious. I love that word, Lord. Capitalize it, all capitals, Lord. Oh, Lord, uh, he delivered my soul. The Lord is gracious. And, and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. How many times, he doesn't say, why are you coming to me about this again? If, if you're still struggling, go again. The Lord preserves the simple hearted. I was helpless and he saved me. Return to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. This is what Lana was talking, we were talking about this morning, about rejoicing over, celebrating what God has given you. How, I, I, I was, um, just recalling the goodness of God is one of the greatest healing things to your soul. Recalling the goodness of God, how he's been good to you. Yeah, I know that this thing right now, this, but he's been good. He is good. And he's been good. I, this, I, I was looking at some pictures of my children. Just little things that, that God has done. Little things. Just healing things. He is faithful yesterday, today. So, I will not eat them here or there. I will not eat them anywhere. I will not eat green eggs and ham. What he's talking about is the Lord is there. He didn't realize that was in Dr. Seuss. He's talking about there, here, there. He was, he is, and he will be. I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. I hope you read Dr. Seuss and you have a God talk with your kids. How God was, he is, and he's there. So he was faithful here. There, he is going to be faithful here, and he's going to be faithful there. Preserves the simple heart. I was helpless. He saved me. Return to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. For, you. for you have delivered me, or delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. You know, you can be so delivered that you're, there's not tears, there's laughter. This is what God wants to do. That where you cried, you laugh. That where you where you lacked, you provide. Like so, you were worried about how to pay your utility bill. Now you're thinking, how can I pay your utility bill? Like there's a there's a switch that's made when we know who He is and what. Like now somebody else that's hurting. Now a river of life flows out of me to them. Guys, it's, it's everywhere. we got to have rivers of life flowing out of us. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believe, therefore I said, I, I'm greatly afflicted. In my alarm I said, all men are liars. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? So even when all these lies and this and this, he's like, you've been good. How can I repay you? How can I repay how, you, how good you've been? For all his goodness to me, I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious is in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Truly, O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. 
you have broken my bonds. Uh, there's just so much he's talking about how the Lord came through. Personal things, very personal. Mama, he brought mama into there. Son of your maidservant, your, your mo- my mom. This is precious. Truly, O Lord, I'm your servant. He said, you have broken my bonds. I will offer you a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. This is what I, this is really what ultimately I had seen. Us calling and offering the praise of thanksgiving so that out of us would, there would just be a release of the, the dam, you know, of, uh, and there would be rivers of fresh water flowing. Because that's what God, desi- that's his desire, that thoughtfulness would arrive again and the thoughts would not just be about myself. Like, Lord, show me how to be a blessing to somebody today. How, how what, what, what do I have? Well, what do I have? If Paul, Peter, is on the way to the gate called Beautiful, and he says, silver and gold, I don't have. But what do I do have? What I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. He, he, he didn't say, as he was walking, don't have any silver and gold. Man, I don't know what we're going to do about this. Blah, blah, blah. He's not talking about what he doesn't have. How do we know that? Because he's aware of what he does have. Like, that'll preach right there. Just, he's aware of what he does have. Uh, go to, I gave you those scriptures, Dalton, real quick. Uh, and we're going to close with this. Acts chapter 3. And then we're going to stand up and we're going to thank the Lord for some stuff. For, out of our own mouth, out of our own lips, out of our own mind, heart. Okay? I love this. Acts chapter 3, verse 12. When Peter saw this, he said to them, fellow Israelites. So this is after Peter prays or tells the, the man at the gate called Beautiful to rise up and walk. So what happened there is words, the words of the Spirit of God were released in that man's situation. Is that what happened? Like what if, what if Peter was on the way to the temple and all he was thinking about was what he didn't have or the cares about this or how all that was going on in his life, how he'd been hurt by I don't know, one of the thousands of disciples that left when he said, eat my flesh, drink my blood, and we were buddies, and they left, and, and here I am just with my 12, and I don't have my other 400 that were, we were tight, you know? And you, you're sad. You're, he's talking to his, his buddy on the way. Then the words of the Spirit of God wouldn't have been released that day. And then a man would have still laid there captive. because he was filled with care. So care is, is to hurt more than you. It's to, it's to captivate you and keep others captive. We gotta recognize care as dangerous as it actually is. It's dangerous. It'll rob you of all joy. It'll rob you of the river that's to bring life to you and life to others. But then Peter acknowledged something in verse 12. He said, why are you men looking at me as if I'm the one that did this? It's not you that does it. It's just as the Bible tells us, Romans 8, 11, the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives and dwells on the inside of you. We were talking about a river, a river of what? Of the spirit of God. This is what dwells on the inside of every believer. No, I'm not talking about being baptized in the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about every person who's born of God has the Spirit of God dwelling in them. What's the Spirit of God? The power of God that raised Jesus from the dead. The same Spirit. The Spirit that raised Paul or the, this man off the, uh, off the mat. Not Paul. Peter, Peter when, he le- when he said, hey, I, I don't have silver and gold, but what I do have in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. He wasn't special in some way. He's, God is not a respecter of persons, but
but he is a respecter of faith. In other words, you and I releasing and coming into agreement with what God says. God's plan on this earth takes us partnering with his word. So Pete, when Peter saw this, he said to them, fellow Israelites, why, do you, why does this surprise you? Why do you think, you, uh, why do you stare at us as if this was done by our own godliness or power? Can I tell you, in Corinthians, when we talk about the gifts of the Spirit, and when Paul wrote to the church at Corinth, this is why he had to talk about love. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. First, the church of Corinth was one of the, the most carnal churches there was. He had to bring, but they were able to receive the word of God simply. He had to bring correction to sexuality, correction to all kinds of, uh, you know, lasciviousness to the flesh, the, all that kind of stuff. But yet they flowed in the spirit it's so much so that he had to bring guidance in how to do it in accordance with the word of God or in order. And so there was gifts of the Spirit in operation there. There was gifts of the Spirit. And there's to be gifts of the Spirit not only because you think you're self-righteous or I think I'm self-righteous. Okay, I did everything perfect today. I did this. I got up. I drank my coffee. I read my three scriptures. I confessed Jesus is Lord. I prayed over this, this section, and this section. And I went through the A's of Beyond Church. Okay, and I got that done. And I didn't yell at my kids when they did that. So I, ah. And then I can go out the door, and now I can be used of God today. Well, sorry, you disqualify, I disqualify, we all disqualify every day. I guess the plans and purposes of God, he should have chosen somebody else. Or we could recognize that what it was done by was not myself, but, the, but God wanting to do something through me. Now, I, I'm not talking about... That we, shouldn't ha- that we shouldn't look like Jesus in righteousness and, and a working out our salvation in fear and trembling. I'm not talking the, about how there shouldn't be holiness and it's where we would set ourselves apart. Be ye holy as I am holy. That should happen. But I'm saying don't qualify yourself based on your own holiness and don't disqualify yourself because of you made a stumbling last night or last week. Don't let that hold you. Let me say hold somebody else when you had the river but it was dammed up because of holiness or lack of holiness godliness lack of godliness so he said don't look at me as if this was my own power or my own godliness that made this man walk verse 16 but it was by faith verse 16 it was by faith in what the name If I don't know who he is, this is why this whole message is about I am, and we're coming into this vision talk to where we're no longer just a church that's a spectator and a consumer, but we're accountable. Greater clarity, uh, simplify. Where there's a greater clarity, there's greater accountability. Where you and I are the church, where we go out beyond these four walls, carrying the message of Jesus, the message of faith in his name. The message of Jesus is Luke chapter 4, it is what we've been talking about. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shammah, the Lord who's there. Jehovah the shepherd, the one who, Psalms 23. I'm telling you guys, this is what we have to have. And we have to know it wasn't by our own power, but it was by us recognizing, acknowledging, coming under or having faith in his name. Verse 16, he says, It wasn't ourselves, but it was by faith in the name of Jesus that this man whom you see and know was made strong. He said something changed in him. You know it changed in him. And how was it? It was by faith in the name of Jesus. It matters what you call Jesus. It matters what I call Jesus. It matters not just to me. It matters to the world. It matters to the world that that you know Jesus as a healer. It matters to to them that you know him as a provider. That you know him as righteousness. Guys, where God revealed himself as righteous, we can receive that because of the blood of Jesus. I don't know what it is why we can receive that and we can tell everybody else that Jesus paid the price in righteousness, but everything else we can't receive. No, we can receive. Because this is who he said about himself. Will God find faith on the earth when he comes? That's up to you. And you know how you can answer that? 
You will hear. You will hear. Knowledge is increasing. Right here. There's this war going on between here and here like never before. Here, let me just say what Paul said. Stick to what is written. I believe, therefore I spoke. Answer the thoughts. And recognize that by faith in Jesus' name, this is the man whom you see and know was made strong. It's Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him as you can all see. Faith in the name. So we're going to stand this morning. And I know you, uh, thank you, Lord. And we'll begin to pass out communion because this is why he's here today. The cross. The Lord is there. The Lord is here. And we're going to, as we receive communion this morning or after, we're going to, well, we'll probably, yeah, after. I'm doing this on the go, you know, trying to think through. Um, We're going to declare some things about who God is to us. Who is he? Who is Jesus? Faith in his name. We've, We've talked about, if you'll put back up while we're passing out communion, put up those seven names on the slide. Thank you so much. So good. You're so good, Lord. You're so good. You're so good. I think that every person here can look at one of those names and have to call upon it. What do you say? All those who call upon the Lord, the name of the Lord shall be what? Saved. The name of the Lord. You know he has many names. King of kings, Lord of lords. The name above every name. He declares to us to where we don't have to wonder what his will is. This is this is so important. You don't have to wonder what his will is. In James it says if you ask anything according to or no, maybe this John. If you ask anything according to his will, we know that he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, we know that we have the petitions that we ask of him. This is James. How do you know his will? He tells us right here. He reveals, he reveals it even in his names. So to receive what he said, I don't have to look with, with my eyes. I have to look with the eyes of my heart. This is, this is what I need to look with. When I see what he's written in his word, his words, they're not natural words. His words are spirit. So let even these words, the Lord that provides, look with these eyes. We, look, we talked about that early on in this message. Looking, learning how to look with these eyes. Look, look at him as the provider. Look at him who heals. Look at him as, and, this, and, and we've been talking about this on Wednesday nights, the Lord who heals. And I want you to know this. No, by no means do we teach this word as, when we teach this word as being, this is the complete uh, doctrine of everything. It is, we're going to continue to teach the word as truth and final authority, not complete theology. What I mean by that is, I'm not going to tell you like, uh, I'm going to come under the authority of God's word so that it can work in my life. I'm not going to I'm not going I'm not going to argue this is this is nothing to argue about. This is something that you and I are to acknowledge. And what happens is when I acknowledge the word as truth, I'm changed. So many times we want to see things change when, when the word of God, it changes me, and when it changes my position, then I can have a change in condition. But so many times we're looking to change the outside, and then we'll change our position. That's not how it works. I have to acknowledge this as truth so that God can move. 
everything in the word of God or everything in life, every promise, every, it, it, you have to first acknowledge it. You have to come under it so that you can see it. You don't clean yourself up to get saved. You acknowledge the saving power of Jesus and then that takes place after. Thank you, Lord. But because we're teaching on Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals, the devil's coming to steal that word from you. The, the message I just taught you today, the devil's coming for it. Where are you at, Lord? He's coming for it. You know why? Because he wants the word. Because the word changes what you see by what you don't see. His words. All right, we're going to take this, we're going to receive this, Lord. We're going to declare this until you come. You told us that every time we receive of the cup and of your body, we declare the Lord's death payment for us until we come, or until you come, until we get to go with you. Thank you, Lord. And so when we declare the, the new covenant, when we declare, we're declaring a body that was beaten and that by his stripes were healed, punishment for our sins was upon his body. And this blood, life is in the blood. So we would no longer be condemned to death, but life, his his life, that's just the blood, for our life. And so now you can have life in Christ because, or because of Christ. So that's why we, were, this is maybe just a little background again of why we receive communion. It's not just some uh, religious act. I'm declaring this morning, I'm saying something about his body was punished for mine. Maybe you smoked. Maybe you still smoke. If the Lord's telling you to lay that down, lay that down. But maybe there's, you're dealing with cancer because of a past sin. You're dealing with something because of a past sin. Maybe you struggled with fast food or whatever it might be. I'm just getting on this because sometimes we struggle to receive from God because of what we did, but Jesus did so we could receive from him. So because of my sins, because of my shortcomings, he paid the price. So I'm going to put more faith in his body taking and paying the price for my sins than me eating greens. I'm going to do what he asks me to do, but I'm going to trust in him. And so, Father, today we trust you. We say thank you this morning for your body being beaten and that by your stripes we're healed every punishment that was to be upon us. We thank you it was placed upon you. And so we declare this morning, before we eat and partake of your body, that we're free. I thank you for freedom from punishment today. Freedom from punishment in our bodies. In the name of Jesus, we receive your body. We just take this cup, we lift it high. The blood of Jesus. It's washed us, it's cleansed us from all unrighteousness so we can come boldly to you. Thank you, Father, for your, the power of your blood to not only cleanse us spiritually, but even the cleansing of conscience, soul, healing, spirit, soul, and body. You did a complete work. And we say thank you, Lord, for doing a complete work in us today, for healing hearts, minds, wills, emotions. Father, we, we thank you for it, and we receive the new covenant of your blood. Hallelujah. And so we give you praise this morning, and I want you to do it with your own mouth. We're going to close with this. You begin to acknowledge God. As, as provider, as healer, as 
the one who fights for you. Father, thank you that you're fighting for you. Just loud enough to your neighbor to hear you. Father, thank you for fighting for families today. We thank you, and we thank you. You are the restorer. You are the, you are, uh, the shepherd. You are the one who, that goes after. You're the one that restores. You're the one that redeems. You are the one that lays down your life for the sheep. Father, thank you for just the, the shepherd's love going to families today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for it. We for being the provider of every good gift. We don't have to have it. We don't have to see it. You're going to provide it. The Lord will provide for himself. Father, thank you. Thank you, Father. We give you glory this morning. We give you glory for healing mom, for healing dad. We give you glory. We give you glory for to, to for showing yourself strong on their behalf for that little girl, for that little boy, for showing yourself strong. Oh, Father, we give you glory this morning. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's give them a little bit more glory. Thank you, Father, that you are our peace, wholeness. We give you glory for that, for peace. We thank you. We give you glory for peace, peace of mind, wholeness of mind, peace, wholeness of heart, peace. Thank you for peace. Thank you for peace. Where, where, where there's been torment for years. Thank you for peace. Thank you for peace. And we declare this morning, you are here. You're here. You're here. You are here. You're here. You're here. Thank you, you're here. So we're not looking elsewhere. We're not looking elsewhere. We're not looking elsewhere because there's a river of life flowing inside me. Somebody say that this morning. There's a river of life flowing inside me. Hallelujah. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask, hope, or think, or imagine according to the power of God that is in you. Father, we thank you for that, for not nickel faith this morning. That we would stop asking for nickels. That you, the, the rivers of life, that where, where there was dead things, that it would come not only uh, be made fresh, but it would burst f- full of life. That there would be many fish, that there would be many fish brought in. That there would be a great harvest uh, of, of where there was once death or hurt. I, even, I thank you, Father, for even where people were hurt uh, by the church or hurt by other believers, uh, uh, that they would they would be that much more prepared to reach, to bring back in, and to bring in the fish. He said, come follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. Father, that there would be such, a, just a, even a sweeping in of, of fish, it would just be a bursting forth, a bursting forth uh, in your house, a bursting forth uh, in, your, in your church of just a fresh catch. Fresh catch. Thank you for that. Occupied. Occupied. Oh, Father, thank you for that. Thank you for that. Fresh flow, fresh rivers. And we just received that this morning. Just a fresh flow, a fresh rivers flowing out of us. Out of our bellies will flow rivers of living water. Just as that temple. Bringing life. Bring life and fruit. Fruit in our children. Fruit in our marriage. Just fruit. And not wait in seasons and seasons and seasons. But harvest continually. Oh, we'll testify that you're good. And we'll testify that you're good. And we tell you we love you this morning because you've been good to us. Oh, you've done great good things for us. And many will say, you've done great, good things for them. We are though, like those who dream. You've done good things for us. Thank you for it. Thank you for it. You are here. You're here. Thank you for it, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. All right. Well, God bless you. We will see you on Wednesday night for as we continue the Lord who heals divine healing. God bless you. Have a great Sunday.